Hello friends and welcome back to 20 Questions With. For those of you who are new here, this is my fun way of introducing other costumers and costumers by asking them 20 silly questions. Today we are talking to Carla of Tiny Angry Crafts. Welcome to my channel, Carla. Hi Noelle, it's good to be here. <laughs> Carla and I met the first time, well not me, me, but like electronically meet, uh, because she was in the inclusion in the costuming community panel, which I will link down below for you guys if you'd like to watch that. It's a really interesting and well thought out panel about how we handle inclusion in our community. So mm -hmm. I would highly recommend that you guys go check that out. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel? Let's see. <laughs> Things I'm really good at talking about everything else. Things I'm terrible at talking about myself, but I will try. We're going to have trouble here because this is 20 questions about you. I know. It's going to be fun. It'll be fun. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm Carla. I'm a 31-year-old fledgling costumer from San Diego, California. <laughs> That's where I was born. <laughs> I started costuming well, I started cosplaying actually back in 2007. Oh wow. When I graduated high school. Uh-huh. Um I actually no, I take that back. I take that back. I take that back. 2000, it was 2004. My first like hand-sewn costume was in 2007 and uh it was Tifa Lockhart from Final Fantasy 7. Oh yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> And my first sewn one was Sarah's Victoria from the anime Helsing. Did a bunch of cosplay stuff for a long time. And then I'm like, I should make clothes. I can sew. I can make my own clothes. Decided to go the costume, I, the fashion design route for college. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's awesome. Got my associates in fashion design. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then I was like, hmm, I want to get into like historical costuming, but I'm nervous. Yeah. Hmm. It's very intimidating from the outside. Oh, yeah. Then yeah. some lovely friends were like, hey, just, just do it. Just do the thing. We got your back. And I'm like, yeah. my channel. My channel is a little bit quiet at the moment, but um, it's my sewing adventures in historical shenanigans and doll clothes making shenanigans. Uh -huh. What else do I do? You keep it real. That's actually why I like it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Like you don't, you don't fluff it up at, at all, which I super appreciate about channels. Like there's, there's a spot for the artistic, like everything is perfect here channel. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, this is how it actually is channels. That's pretty much me. Cause I blog like that. And then there's like a, a nice friendly in between, which I would, I would classify your channel as you well there you go there's my channel <laughs> <laughs> all right are you ready to play 20 questions I'm as ready as I'm ever gonna be okay what did you want to be when you grew up paleontologist oh wow that's cool I remember watching Jurassic Park and oh gosh I can't remember the name of the show the name of the show but it was about paleontologists and like these kids would interview them and stuff oh wow i think it was on pbs it was probably on pbs let's be real here and um after watching jurassic park and that i walked up to my mom and said i'm gonna be a paleontologist and she was like what is that <laughs> and i'm like it's someone who digs up and studies dinosaur bones and she's like okay live your dreams <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> that's rad that your mom would be like yeah go for it <laughs> yeah. and then I realized how much schooling and how much math I would have to endure and I'm, I'm terrible at math I have dyscalculia so I uh what's I dyscalculia know. dyscalculia is um uh under the umbrella of dyslexia uh -huh. but it's uh it's basically dyslexia but with numbers I oh. get numbers twisted around, which is amusing considering I'm a fashion designer and have to deal with like eighth of inches and whatnot. Yeah. What do you have to have math for for paleontology? Uh, carbon dating and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
in my head in carbon dating, you just like stick a chunk of something into a little box and then you stick it in a fryolator or whatever and then it comes out and there's a number. Right? <laughs> right. And it just says like 12 million BC or whatever. You know, and you're just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but it was a lot of like remembering things and I'm like, mm, no, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Does pineapple belong on pizza? No. Well, you know what? It depends. <laughs> if you are doing, if you're doing like a proper, like, air quote, Hawaiian pizza, sure. But if you're just like, I'm going to put pineapple on this regular pizza that has like sausage on it or whatever, then no. <laughs> don't bother <laughs> I, right. I've seen it done <laughs> my favorite pizza is pepperoni and pineapple I'm sorry <laughs> all right I actually don't really like pizza I don't like tomato I don't like cooked tomatoes so I don't like tomato mm. sauce so I don't I effectively don't like half of Italian food I like it it's just dough cheese pepperoni pineapple okay and then parmesan you can't time travel but your phone has the internet from five years in the future what do you search first Five years in the future? <laughs> By the way, we're recording this on the eve of the election, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I started laughing. Yeah, I know. I could tell. <laughs> I <was> like, well. <laughs> what, what's my boy Joe Biden up to in that there White House? Right. <laughs> What's the what's the White House dog doing? There's there's like all these sites that also like talk about the fact that he is old enough that he will probably die in office. Then Kamala will like what is she like she'll become president. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm like yeah. what's what's my girl up to? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What would you search for? Pictures of the White House dog. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know he's like the only president who didn't have one? Really? Yeah. There's some like big thing in there that maybe there was one other one or something and it was a really long time ago, but they're like, there has been a dog in the White House for the last blah, 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 hundred years. And yeah. Yeah. There needs to be a pet in that house. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's actually the problem. Maybe he just needs a dog. Exactly. I don't think a dog can help that. <laughs> no. But unconditional love, you know. If you ran away and joined the circus, what would your performance be? I've actually thought of this when I was a kid. I actually considered running away and joining the circus and being a tightrope walker. Oh, that's awesome. That's funny that you considered it. I, th I always thought it would be fun too. Like my, my dad would yell at me about stuff and then he'd go, fine, just run away and join the circus. And I'm like, I mean, that doesn't seem bad. You get a lot of travel. <laughs> Interesting people. I told it to my grandpa, and he was just like, you know you have to do a lot of work, right? And I'm like, okay, but yeah. I also get to play with animals, so yeah. it's fine. Yeah. And then I grew up and got older, and I'm all like, oh, I don't, I'm just going to do one of the Cirque du Soleil type circuses then. Yeah. What fictional character do you identify the most with, and why? This is hard. <laughs> this is already hard. Great. I don't know. I've, I haven't read any fiction in a while i mean it could be like a cartoon character or any fictional character right like any, any anime character any anything don't duck <laughs> why i you don't like to wear pants <laughs> <laughs> no i love to wear pants i just i just am a i can be a fuss pot sometimes uh -huh. and if i'm really 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 angry then i just will <laughs> that's amazing what do you wish someone had taught you a long time ago math isn't as, as terrifying as it looks which is something that my elementary school teacher grandmother tried to explain to me mm -hmm. but I didn't pay any attention yeah and then it took like taking a few college courses and having really kind understanding friends that are really really good at math mm -hmm. to just sit me down and write out numbers and whatnot for me and help me with that. I remember sitting in algebra class going like, when am I ever going to use this? And now it's like the thing I use all the time. Like <laughs> algebra is actually so important. It really is. What fashion trend needs to be brought back? Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> so many are running through my head right now. Plufors and knickerbockers. Okay. Wait, yeah. what's a knickerbocker? Is that it's it's ba- it's like a plufor. The plufor goes over the knee. The knickerbocker goes to the knee. Oh, okay. Yeah. Those are cute. Yeah. Yeah. I have a cute pattern for a pair, so I'm going to make some, hopefully oh. soon. <laughs> oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. What animal would you choose to be? A dolphin. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I've uh, loved dolphins ever since I was really little. Yeah. Like, anytime I see them, I'm like, yes, that is, yeah. that is my animal friend right there. I love them. They're amazing and majestic. I want to be like that. When I was really little, I lived in San Diego, and so my mom had a season pass to see Roland, and so we would go check the dolphins out all the time and, like, go to the dolphin petting area, and, like, mm-hmm. I got to touch him his tongue one time when I was super little, and now I feel, like, kind of bad about that, because I'm also, yeah. like, release the whales, and, you know, <laughs> all that kind of stuff, but, like, mm-hmm. I am still kind of glad I got to do it, because that's something that's, like, I stuck my hand in a killer whale mouth and my mom, my mom like allowed that to go down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not that smart. <laughs> like if that, if that whale had just shut its mouth, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Have you ever had an imaginary friend? Yes. Her name was Susan and she was from Melbourne, Australia. Did she have an Australian accent? Yes, she did. And she had a pet koala. Oh, wow. That's awesome. How how long did, was she your imaginary friend? For about a year when I was like that six going on seven age. Uh-huh. But then I figured like, I guess the imaginary friend manifested because I was like, hmm, I'm lonely. And also my mother is having a child soon. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I need something to fill that potential gap of, oh, yay right sister (laughs) oh yay sister (laughs) if you had to use a fake name what fake name would you use I usually go by my middle name for things Mm -hmm. because there's like 80 bajillion Carlas in the area a lot Robin Fontaine Robin Fontaine that's Mm -hmm. a great one (laughs) yeah there are a million Carlas my my husband every time I talk about you my husband thinks I'm talking about the there's a Top Chef contestant called Carla and we really like her because she makes everything with love. Mm -hmm. And so anything that she puts out like books or shows, he's like all over it. He, I think he's got the hots for Carla. Anyway, he thinks I'm talking about that Carla and I'm like, no, 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 no. (laughs) She's not a chef. (laughs) I don't know. I'm a terrible cook. But (laughs) that's funny. (laughs) What is your favorite magical or mythological animal? Unicorns. Solid. I like unicorns, yeah. That one tapestry, where is it? Is it in the Met? With the the red background with the unicorn. In a circle thing? Uh-huh, yeah. So that's actually um, at the Cloisters, also uh-huh. in New York City. Oh, okay. But I went to the Cloisters. I think it's in one of my, my vlog from when I went to New York City last year in April. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got to go see that tapestry, and I was like, what? Also... The Cloisters is a weird place. Like, it's like they actually moved a cloister, like a a monastery there, or they built a monastery-looking building. It looks like a medieval monastery Mm -hmm. just to display art. Like, it was never, that was the entire point of it. And I was like, that's amazing. But yeah, they have a lot of religious art in there. So, Hmm. yeah. Yeah, it was one of my uh, favorites ever, ever since I saw it in a book when I was about eight or so. Do you know there's a whole bunch of them? No. Yeah, so like that's <laughs> one panel of like a multi-panel series. Oh my god. Yeah. If I can find the stuff about that, I'll send you a link cuz you. Yeah, it's it's I had no idea. Yeah, they're all really cool. They're all by the like the same obviously the same guy like or people made it <laughs> all these tapestries together. So yeah. Nice. What fictional world or place would you like to visit? It's a really good question. <laughs> Every Just time I think of one I'm like Actually, that sounds dangerous. Actually, yeah. Dangerous. <laughs> like, where do the uh, Care Bears live? <laughs> I want to go to Gummy Bear Glen or whatever. Oh my god, I was just about to say that. <laughs> Gummy Bears. Bouncing here and there and everywhere. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
I'll go to Gummy Bear Glen, hang out with them. It seems fairly innocuous. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, if you could hang out with any cartoon character, who would you choose and why? Man, there's a lot of cartoon ones in this. I, I had a theme. <laughs> Apparently, I think you like cartoons. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm just really lazy about watching cartoons. <laughs> I am too. The cast of Scooby Doo. Yeah, that's solid. Yeah. yeah. Be like, so finding random old people, old man with messing stuff up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How's that been going for you guys? Could I help? <laughs> That's awesome. If you could choose any two famous people to have dinner with, who would they be? Ida B. Wells and Carter G. Woodson. And what would you talk to them? I would probably let Carter G. Woodson know that, hey, we have a whole month now instead of a week. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. And Ida, I would tell her that she is amazing and we would just talk politics and fashion. That's awesome. Would you rather have a rewind button or a pause button on your life? A pause button because sometimes I will get ready to say and do dumb things and then they happen and I'm just like, oops. <laughs> Oh, that's an interesting way to look at that question. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good answer. <laughs> I hadn't considered using it for good. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a supernatural event, seen a ghost or anything like that? Yes. Ooh. When I was five or six, I was at the cemetery with my mom. And we were laying flowers on my great grandfather's grave. And I'm just walking around and I see this uh, little tiny pink headstone. And I walk up to it and I'm just like, I'm just reading it and stuff. And it was of a, a girl who passed. She was about four. And I'm just like looking at it. And I'm like, that's so sad. So I, I had some more flowers in my hand. So I just like left a little rose. And then I felt like someone tapped my shoulder like like a tag. Wow. And I'm just like, okay, mom. <laughs> Mom's like up the hill. Wow. And then I felt it again, and I'm just kind of like, am I it? <laughs> wow, that's creepy. Were you, like, freaked out by it, or? Not really. Uh... I was always taught to respect the dead mm -hmm. and respect their spirits and whatnot. So it wasn't creepy. It was just like unexpected. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. What is one cool feature you would add to your dream house? A sewing machine that will get the fabric and sew it itself for me. <laughs> Okay. When I'm having a lazy day, all I got to do is press a button and like an hour later, the garment's done. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Just pre-program everything in there like the night before and then call it a day. <laughs> if given the option to time travel to your past and give yourself some advice, what age would you choose to go to? 15. Okay. And I would tell myself, everything will get better for you. You won't be dating that idiot anymore. <laughs> You don't even like guys, so it's fine. <laughs> if there was a room filled with everything you've ever lost, what item would you be most excited to recover? A poly pocket that I had that had a tree swing. It had like a little, it was like a little house and it had a little tree swing in it. Mm -hmm. And I remember just like constantly messing just with that tree swing poly mm -hmm. pocket. I had a bunch of them, but it was just that particular one that I loved. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I might have had that also. <laughs> Either that or like my best friend did because we would swap them all the time. Like, you know, I would keep one for a week and then we would trade and, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. If you could have any artifact, piece of art, or thing from any art gallery, what would you have? This is question number 20, by the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> you said any one? Yeah. Any okay. artifact, piece of art, or thing from any art gallery? I would get whatever the oldest slave-related artifact is in, that is in the gallery out and ceremoniously 
either given back to somewhere in West Africa or just put in the ocean. That's a very meaningful one. I took the T-Rex from the Chicago Field Museum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all getting deep and meaningful. You're like, I want to get the T-Rex. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I love that. <laughs> Constance said something like super awesome. Like I would take the hope diamond and give it back to India or one of the, the crazy, you know, and I'm just like, why you got to make me look bad girl? <laughs> I just want a T-Rex. All I want. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if this was chaos mode, then yes, I would be like, Hmm. My husband's like, where are you going to put that? And I'm like, we have vaulted ceilings. He's like, we do not have 35 foot ceilings. I'm like, put it in the backyard. I don't care. Like, it's a T-Rex. It'll be fine. <laughs> True. I mean, who's going who's gonna to mess with it? Right? <laughs> Actually put it in the front yard. That'd be a great way to keep burglars out. <laughs> and this super controversial bonus question. Is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> The funny thing is I bought um, stuff for making hot dogs for my grandma earlier today. And I told her, I said, oh yeah, my friend's going to interview me and she's probably going to ask me if a hot dog a sandwich. And she said that it is. I'm inclined to agree with her. Ooh. Uh -huh. Because even though it's like, folded in half bread you are still putting things on it it is a combination of stuff on bread and squished down and consumed right ergo some things a sandwich like you would call like a veg like a vegetable sandwich a sandwich yeah so. <laughs> my thing is like philly cheesesteaks are considered a sandwich and they're also on a roll like Kaiser roll sandwiches, like Subway sandwiches, are also like attached yeah. to like that. So, yeah. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> but it's yeah, a like philosophical question. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Although I have counter arguments for both sides. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining me today, Carla, and thank you to everyone out there for joining both of us. I will leave a list of Carla's accounts down below so that you can go check her out and show her some love. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below about what you guys are up to. We'll see you guys later with another video. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.